Hi all and welcome to the 11th lecture of the deep learning course. Today we're going to be uh, discussing advanced generative models, uh, those that uh, model explicitly uh, the density of the data and uh, uh, covering some of the most popular uh, approaches in the last two or three years. So today we're going to be discussing about early autoregressive models, so the early predecessors uh, of advanced generative models and we're going to cover some modern variants uh, of autoregressive models. We're also going to be discussing uh, normalizing flows as well as flow-based models. Uh, specifically in our chart of uh, generative models, we're going to be uh, focusing on models uh, that have tractable density estimation and uh, examples are made, made, pixel R and M and change of variable models. Uh, so, um, so far we've been seeing uh, models which, uh, for one reason or the other, assume independence in our uh, dimensions, in the data dimensions, or in the uh, latent uh, variable dimensions. Usually this is done for uh, efficiency reasons or for uh, tractability reasons. It's easier to model data if uh, one makes this assumption. Um, quite often this is also... Uh, beneficial for uh, for our learning. However, um, it is reasonable to think that in many uh, occasions uh, and in many types of data, um, assuming independence uh, is uh, illogical. For instance, uh, for data we've got where we have uh, an order, uh, it does make sense to uh, try to model um, correlations between uh, data points in, in that order, in that sequence. Um, so uh, from a generation point of view, so from a generative model point of view, we would say that uh, in this case, to generate this data, we must take into account uh, the past. So for images, uh, clearly each pixel uh, influences the pixel uh, next to it or below it. Uh, so there is an order, there is a sequence. Uh, which uh, sequence is the uh, appropriate one that is not necessarily obvious and quite often we have to make up for an order but this doesn't mean that there is no sequence uh, uh, treating all pixels independently is not necessarily a good uh, approach audio definitely have a, has an order right uh, so every uh, every time step uh, uh, relates to the previous time steps uh, every new phoneme depends on the previous phonemes uh, via the words that we are uh, uh, speaking or the music that we're playing. And clearly text is also another uh, example of um, strongly, uh, you know, uh, sequential uh, types of type of data. Uh, each word definitely depends on the previous one uh, to uh, carry a very precise meaning. Uh, so uh, what do we do uh, um, uh, for this type of data? Uh, as we've seen so far, um, the uh, learning objective is typically maximizing the data log likelihood and uh, here we can uh, take into account uh, uh, the chain rule of probabilities uh, to decompose the log likelihood in a, in a product of probabilities where um, uh, you know each variable like we have the first the first variable uh, in time being um, independent so to speak well or not conditioned on other variables uh, it's a better say better way to put it and then uh, the second uh, you know the variable in the second step depending on the first uh, time step the variable in the third time step depending on the previous two time steps and so on and so forth this can be compactly written uh, as a product of conditionals here the uh, smaller than i indicates uh, the uh, uh, all other variables uh, uh, below the ith one if x is not sequential, however, we want to use autoregressive models, uh, it is possible to impose an order. Uh, that is also possible when the order is uh, uh, not obvious to, to us. So, for instance, it is possible to say that uh, in images, I'm going to generate pixels from uh, top left to uh, the bottom right by uh, moving uh, row wise. Um, will this always be correct or reasonable? Perhaps, uh, 
it might give good results, but it also might uh, cause artificial bias. In any case, we have to be aware of uh, the risks. Uh, so uh, uh, the, the main, uh, the main uh, point here is that when having these conditionals, um, like um, uh, these terms in this product, we can uh, model them with deep neural networks. And the first attempts uh, were with uh, logistic regression and with neural networks. Uh, nowadays, we could say that uh, we could have a deep neural network learning to generate one pixel at a time given, given uh, previous pixels. Uh, the learning objective is, as uh, um, usual, maximizing the log likelihood. And uh, uh, by making sure that the uh, conditional, each of the conditionals is tractable, so it returns a valid probability. Uh, this means that then uh, the logarithm uh, of the likelihood is also tractable. And uh, this is good because we can uh, then uh, um, opt to choose, uh, opt to model conditional probabilities uh, uh, directly, um, such that they return directly probabilities, uh, thus avoiding to, uh, uh, to avoiding of having uh, to uh, Count for um, additional partition functions uh, z. So if by uh, like uh, the output of a neural network is directly a probability between zero and one, for instance, uh, then we don't need to normalize and we don't need to account explicitly for a partition function. <clears throat> one of the uh, first works to try to do dense estimation using uh, autoregressive models and deep neural networks. Uh, was the neural autoregressive density estimation by uh, Larsha and Murray. Uh, so uh, their model is inspired by RBMs uh, in the sense that they are using um, sigmoidal uh, neural networks like in RBMs uh, to model the conditionals. However, unlike the RBMs, uh, the, uh, um, this model is tractable. It can compute uh, uh, the density uh, tractably. Um, this uh, model uh, relies on, on, uh, on two equations. Uh, uh, the first equation maps um, past inputs on a hidden state, and then the second equation maps the hidden state uh, um, to a future input. Specifically, it samples a future uh, output uh, given uh, a past hidden state. Uh, notice here that um, uh, for computing the hidden state, the input relies only on past observations. So uh, our uh, observations uh, v are only taken into account if they are smaller than i, and i is the future pixel or whatever output dimension that we're interested in, uh, interested in generating. Uh, but also the parameter matrix w um, um, only, only that part of parameter matrix W is used, which relies on smaller than I dimensions. So basically, we are using only part of the parameter matrix, which is relevant for our past computation. We don't use the future dimensions of the parameter matrix W. Uh, similarly, in a way, um, when we are uh, using this hidden state to sample the new pixel or the new up dimension I, uh, we are only using uh, the ith um, uh, domain, uh, sorry, row of our parameter matrix uh, v, uh, which means then that uh, our uh, the rows of our parameter matrix v are uh, weights uh, for uh, that correspond or that they parameterize the uh, sampling of uh, of future values for uh, for each dimension separately. Uh, the neural autoregressive density estimation. Uh, relies on, on a teacher forcing algorithm, which uh, basically says that during training, uh, we are um, uh, using as our past observations, the ground truth um, uh, data from our uh, training set. So for instance, if we have an image, then we're gonna use the pixel values that we know exist in our, in our, uh, in our training image. Um, so we're gonna go one, one pixel at a time and we're going to use the past pixel values here. Uh, that is, we're not going to use the uh, pixel values that our model generated in a recursive way uh, so that we predict the future values. That way, we are forcing the learning, we're forcing the teacher to uh, use uh, um, ground truth uh, past data as our past observations. 
However, during testing, clearly we don't have access. Uh, we don't know what uh, what is our future image. We're sampling it, in fact. So uh, in that case, we have to rely on our own model's predictions and condition on them so that we generate future uh, pixel values. Um, um, shortly after, um, another very interesting wor work was the masked autoencoder for distribution estimation by um, uh, uh, Germain and others. Uh, so um, uh, their question was whether we can um, in, uh, induce to an autoencoder structure um, autoregressive properties such that we can perform density estimation. And why is this uh, challenging? Well, it's challenging because exactly of the structure of an autoencoder. So uh, let's, uh, you know, for a simple case, let's assume uh, here uh, this um, autoencoder uh, with this is, you know, our input and this is the reconstruction. Um, um, clearly, each of the dimensions here will be influenced by uh, all the input dimensions um, uh, of X, right? Because they're all contributing to uh, the weight, uh, sorry, to the, to the um, hidden activations and therefore, you know, like to the output uh, dimensions, uh, the, the, uh, the, the predictions of the output dimensions. Um, <clears throat> so um, uh, this is problematic because like that we cannot uh, induce the autoregressive property which requires that um, uh, uh, f uh, we, we, we can have only access to past uh, observations to make uh, future predictions and um, to enable this uh, uh, um, uh, Germain others uh, uh, introduce the concept of masking uh, so uh, they uh, uh, introduce a matrix M which is uh, uh, receiving binary values either 0 or 1 and uh, uh, based on this um, uh, matrix, basically they can select specific elements in, uh, in, in W and V uh, such that uh, they perform computations in an autoregressive manner. Uh, clearly, uh, the matrix uh, M cannot be arbitrary, cannot be random. It is specifically designed such that uh, for uh, the computations we have uh, um, only past observations uh, used um, uh, for uh, future predictions. Uh, the way that uh, you know this is defined is not important uh, for for this lecture. Um, for more information, you can um, check the paper. Uh, th what is important is uh, to understand the concept of masking uh, here, because the concept of masking or gating is quite often uh, used uh, nowadays in similar contexts. Um, and the made architecture here uh, is uh, quite um, intuitively obtained by um, uh, you know by applying the mask on on the uh, original neural network. It is not very different in a way from um, dropping out connections, right? So here we're we're going to um, uh, uh, we're going to keep only uh, those. Um, um, weight elements in our uh, matrices that uh, are uh, uh, that abide by the autoregressive property and that's how we're going to compute one uh, dimension at a time. Thank you.